This part covers audio data files rather than audio CDs. You may wish to convert your stereo mix down to a different file format like MP3, QuickTime or Windows Media. This can easily be done from within either the WAVE project or the VIP. With a WAVE project, it's just a matter of going to the file menu and selecting Export Audio. As you can see, a wide variety of formats are supported. You can specify the format settings here, including bitrate and encoder quality. Navigate to the destination folder you want it saved to and click on Export. It's also possible to do an audio data file export directly from within a VIP multitrack project. Placing start and end markers is unnecessary, so I'll delete them. Right click in the top half of the grid and marker bar to do this. Then go to the same export menu. Under export settings you'll see that the option complete project up to last object has automatically been selected. If you just want to export a few bars of a song, all you need to do is to draw in the range. You'll notice that when I look at export settings, marked range only is now checked. So in this example, a two bar range of audio has been exported as an MP3. Another important menu item is under Tools, Track Bouncing. It's similar to Export, but has fewer format options, although it's more flexible and configurable. It has four generating options. The first option is only a WAVE project. I have From VIP Start to Last Object End selected for this, so that generates a new WAVE project. The next generating option is New separate object in current VIP. By default, master effects are not included in this bounce. Also, the track effects of the target track are not included if they are identical with the source track. This ensures that track effects are not applied twice. So now, a new object has been created below the existing ones. The third generating option is Replace Objects in Current VIP. This does a bounce of all the objects and then replaces them with the newly bounced one. The newly bounced object will then be placed on the currently selected track. The final generating option is New VIP. This will open the bounced files in a new VIP. As a range has been set in the VIP, the source setting has been automatically switched to only marked range. For this setting, I'm also going to enable multi-track bounce. This will bounce each track to a separate file and place them in a new VIP. So now we have a new project containing four freshly bounced objects. Multi-track bounce can be very handy if you want to send separate audio files to another studio or musician. For example, maybe you have recorded a drum part in London for someone who lives in Berlin. Having edited the best take, you want to consolidate these edits into individual WAV files. To do this, it would be a matter of selecting multi-track bounce, choosing the bit rate. These are 24-bit mono. The dithering is set to smart, which means Samplitude detects whether it's required or not. As these files will remain at 24-bit, it won't be an issue. I'm selecting new VIP as the generating option. I'm saving them to a folder called export. So now the consolidated files have been opened in a new VIP. At the moment, they are grouped together by default but you can ungroup them by going to the menu item Object Ungroup Objects. 
so now they are individually selectable and movable. One option would be to zip the files so they can be sent to the destination by FTP. Press Windows plus E to open the Explorer to browse to the Drums export folder. You'll notice there are three different file types in the folder, which can seem initially a bit cluttered. It's easy to declutter them by doing the following. Right click and select View by Details. Then select Group by Type. This keeps them nicely organised. Clicking on Type will switch the order from top to bottom. Incidentally, I'm showing you this in Vista 64, so it may differ slightly in XP, although the principle is the same. The H2 files contain the audio waveform peak information, or meter data. The green ones represent Samplitude wave projects. Clicking on one of these will open it up in a new instance of Samplitude. If needed, you can drag and drop these directly into an empty Samplitude window. Lasso select the WAVE project files and drag them over. They are cascaded by default and pressing Enter will tile them. Very useful if you want to edit multiple WAVE projects, although I do like the cascade effect. Anyway, back to the different file types. The third file is the familiar WAV file. I'll move them to the top. I only really need to send these WAV files, so I'm going to compress or zip them so I can send them via FTP. Lasso select them, then right click and select Send to Compressed Zipped Folder. I'll type in a name, so now they are ready to send. It's important to back up your projects, and this can be done by going to File, Burn Project Backup on CD or DVD. CD DVD Backup uses a program called Magix Goya Burn R. This will burn the entire project, making it completely transferable. You could use this method if you wanted to send someone a CD or DVD in the post instead of using FTP. If they use Samplitude, it would be a matter of just restoring the project and opening the VIP. If the recipient just wants the WAV files alone, it's probably best to remove the rest to save confusion. Just shift select the non-WAV data and click on remove. Of course, you could always leave everything on and maybe they would become curious and decide to try out Samplitude for themselves. That's the backup finished, so let's see what it contains. We have the WAV files in a folder. Clicking on the Goya icon opens the Restore wizard. This gives you various options for restoring your files. I'm going to choose the second option. I'm going to restore them now to give you an idea of how it works. I've sped up the rendering process for these tutorials so you don't get too bored. So there you are, the WAV files are now restored back to their original state. 